Today I'm going to give you my render presets for Unreal Engine 5. So in the link in the description down below, you can find all the download link stuff. I'm going to show you how to get it into your project. I have an empty Unreal Engine project here, and let's go to my desktop, and I have the zip file right here. What you're going to do is right click on it and extract it. However you extract it, I'm using WinRAR, so I would just navigate down to WinRAR and extract here. That's going to give you another folder. And now I have this cinematics folder right here, and I'm just going to drop it onto my desktop. And if we go and look inside, we have all these U assets. These are Unreal assets that we need to bring into our Unreal content browser. So let's go back to Unreal really quick. And if we find any asset in our content browser, we can right click and go to Show and Explore. This is going to bring us directly to where our project is saved. I just have this project on my desktop and in the content folder, I need to bring in the cinematics folder that I just extracted. So I'll just minimize my Unreal project, keep this window open. Here's my content folder for this project. And then I'm going to take this folder, drop it into the content folder. That's very important. This is project specific. So if you're trying to translate these projects or these presets into other projects. You have to do it for every single project. That's just a little gotcha about Unreal. Let's go back to Unreal now. And now if we look inside our content folder, we have a cinematics folder. And if we double click on that, it's not loaded. We will have to restart Unreal. Sometimes it takes a second to load. So let's just restart Unreal really quick. And with the engine restarted, we now have our cinematics folder populated with all the render presets that I shared with you. So let me just show you how to use it really quick. I have this random fantasy interior that I picked up on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Any environment should work, but it's worth mentioning that more complex scenes may take longer to render, so it really just depends on what you're trying to render and how long it'll take. That being said, I'm hoping this is pretty fast. I haven't tested this yet. We have our environment loaded now, and I'm going to go into my main content folder, and I have this render demo level sequence right here. I can double click on this, and we can see that I have a camera in this scene. And if I go ahead and look through my camera, I can see I have a little camera fly through like so. Nothing too crazy. Now, if I want to render this out using the presets, what I need to do is select the clapboard to render, and we're going to get our movie render queue. With our settings for our render, we need to go to the unsaved config, and under our little floppy disk save option, we have all the different presets that I have for my rendering stuff. I typically use this for a lot of my client work and my approach for a lot of rendering in Unreal is what you see is what you get. So I do 99.9% .9 of the work in camera, as in whatever my camera sees in my Unreal Engine viewport, that's what's going to be rendered. And if I need to do some more advanced things like compositing or crypto mats, I also do have render presets for that as well in here. But most of the time, I will use the basic render settings for previews to my client. And when I'm ready to do a final render, I will do a 4K in a ACES color profile to get a little bit more color grading if I need to do it. But 90% of the time, basic render settings should be fine, assuming that you are spending a lot of time making sure that your shot looks good with good lighting, good models, good textures, etc. So that being said, let's go to our render settings, unsave config, and let's load up the basic render settings one by eight PNG 4K. This one by eight right here is the anti-aliasing settings. So if we click on this, we can see here that my anti-aliasing settings is one in the spatial sample count and eight in the temporal sample count. And then all the other stuff that I typically check when I'm rendering. I also include game overrides in most of these presets. Now, if you look at all the presets, we can see how many samples I have here. I even have the path tracer here, but I don't use the path tracer a ton, but it's there because I know someone was going to ask for it. That being said, let's go ahead and render out this shot. What I always do recommend is going to your output folder and don't save it in your project directory movie renders. It's not going to put it in nice folders for you. I recommend saving this somewhere neatly on your computer. So I have this folder on my desktop, render demo 001. 
select folder, hit accept, and we can hit the render button. It may take some time to compile shaders for your project, so go ahead and do that. But once that's done, your render should kick off. Let's go ahead and take a look over here. And we can see here that it is doing my warm up of my frame. It's loading up all the lights, it's getting everything queued up. If there's any Niagara effects in my scene, it'll load all that beforehand. And then after a moment, it should start spitting out frames using these render settings. This is going pretty fast for this scene that I've not really rendered, tested before, so I'm just gonna let this finish. Looks like it's gonna take about seven, eight minutes. 2,000 years later. After about eight minutes, that render is done, and we can click on the output folder and see all of our beautiful frames, double click, and hey look, there's a cool frame of the thing that we rendered in Unreal Engine. Now let me show you how to do a vertical format with my presets here. Back in Unreal, what I typically do for rendering vertical is I will find my camera inside my outliner. So I'll type cam and select my camera. I need to go to my film back settings and I will set my sensor width to be inverted. So if this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio, image, we need to swap these numbers. So what I'll typically do is set my film back to a 16 by nine DSLR. And then I will say my sensor width will be 20.25. And then the sensor height is going to be 36. And that was basically the height and width just inverted. So now we can see that we have a vertical format for our shot. And sometimes depending on the crop of the vertical format, I will go into my camera and adjust my focal length to be something a little bit tighter so I can get the shot to uh, be exactly what I want it to be. I also may go in and adjust my focus settings a little bit just so that I can really make sure that the stuff I want to be looking at is in focus and sharp. That being said, what I then do is I go to my clapboard render settings and I will swap my output resolution. I will just invert these numbers, but very conveniently, I also have vertical versions for all of my render presets. So I'll just select the 2K vertical just for time's sake, and I will save this on my computer as another uh, spot or save this somewhere in another spot. So we'll do render demo 002, select folder, accept, hit render, and it may do some compile shader things again. And uh, once it's done, it should be in vertical format and horizontal format that we rendered previously. Now we can see here that my frame is rendering in the vertical format. So I'm just gonna let this finish. This one's much, much faster because we're not rendering a 4K image. A few moments later. With that render done, we can go ahead and click on the output folder and now we have our vertical frames. Let's go ahead and right click and go to properties and can confirm 1080 by 1920. And there is no black bars around the edge, which means we have a perfectly clean vertical image that we can post on TikTok or Instagram or wherever else we need to post stuff. For demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and import this stuff into DaVinci Resolve so we can actually get our stuff ready to render to post on the internet. So I'll bring in my vertical cut and I'll bring in my horizontal cut. Let's select both of them, make a new timeline, call this tutorial rendering, whatever we wanna call it. And we have our vertical shot right here. And then we have our horizontal shot right there. Now, if we needed to just render the horizontal or vertical shot, obviously we would go into our our timeline settings and make sure that we uncheck use project settings and set use vertical. And now we have a vertical aspect ratio. However you need to post your content, you can do that. I'm gonna leave it here. And if you'd like to learn more about some of the other presets I have in the download, which is free, it's all free. I promise it's free. There'll be explanations on how to do some of the more advanced stuff like EXRs and color grading that. But with all that being said, I hope this is a useful set of presets for you. I do it because I've, I'm just tired of hitting the anti-aliasing and the game override, just like saving clicks. So I hope to save you some clicks as well. Hope this video was useful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else. Comment section is down there for that as well. And I'll leave you with the final tip. As always, eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.